Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Let me get comments up here on my iPad. I am going to right away put this on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube today, thank you so much for checking out the video. And at the bottom of the YouTube video, you will see um, it is split up. And um, so you can just very quickly kind of move through the video if you're not interested in all the chit chat. I'm live on Facebook right now. Good morning. Hi, Susan. Thank you for joining me. We're going to do a little crafting today. I'm wiping off my mat here because my kids were in here last night and clearly probably eating something even though I've said don't eat in my office right um so we're gonna do a little crafting and then I have some coffee I have it and I'm gonna try to tilt this a little bit so you can see it it says be still and no it's from this really wonderful company that I just currently found. It's called um, the Daily Grace Co. And I just, it was one of those things I saw an ad pop up on Facebook and I never follow those ads. I feel like sometimes they're not the best to follow, but I clicked on it and I went and I looked around and it's a um, Christian type, like almost, it almost reminds me of like old Bible bookstores. If you remember years ago when you could go to a Bible bookstore, they have like Bible studies and this coffee cup I just wanted. <laughs> so they're having like a pretty good sell. And so I got it and I have been enjoying it. So I have some coffee and good morning, Deborah. Um, so I have some coffee and I thought we would do a little crafting and I would catch you guys up on a few things because I have been MIA. So as I open this up, I'm going to chit chat about that and then we'll craft. Um, this is a paper pumpkin kit from a couple months ago. I think not this month, but maybe last month. I was so excited to get this and then it got set on the shelf <laughs> and... Um, I didn't do it, <laughs> so we're gonna do it today. Um, you know, it just happened. It just it's been it's been really hard the last couple months. So, so we're gonna um, open this up and do it, and then I'll talk through it after I do a little bit of an update. So I've been a little bit MIA because I just had to. I just had to. I just I could not keep up. I've struggled really very very much. Um, this last, I would say the last six weeks. And, um, this box is gorgeous. I really love it. And so I just had to stop and, um, I'm really thankful. My mom is here and she has been helping, um, quite a bit. Just, I'm feeling like I'm starting to get, um, I would say I'm, I'm starting to feel like, I'm getting my bearings back. And so um, I feel like August is going to be good and I'm going to be back on track. And so I'm going to take the rest of July and kind of still take it off. I, I'm going to I have some projects planned to share with you guys next week. But I think just I think I have like two and I'm going to share those with you guys. And then I'm just going to start fresh in August and sometimes you know, you have to do that. You just have to take a minute and it's not, you know, there's nothing terrible happening. It's just life right now, living in all of the craziness and with COVID and finding out that the kids will probably be required to wear masks um, as they go back to school and then kind of joining in the fight to maybe prevent that. Um, I'm not good at, at those kinds of things. I tend to get very nervous and I just have some social anxiety around a lot of things, but particularly those things. And so it's hard for me to just get involved and it not drain me. And so this last week as we've joined in and gone to board meetings and 
um, you know, done all of the things. It's just been draining. And this summer is, um, has been a little bit draining. Hey, Missy. Hey, Gail. Uh, Missy said that she still has hers to do. Yeah. So, um, so all of that to say, it's fine. I'm doing better than I was. I'm glad my mom is here to help. It helps to have somebody, another adult around kind of in the craziness to just lend a hand and be with the kids. And um, we have some fun things coming up at the end of the week. We have our county fair, which was canceled last year that we are having this year and we are ecstatic to go. We're hoping the weather holds out and we don't see 100 degree weather again for it. And, um, I'm just taking a few, I'm just taking a, a few weeks off you guys. I'm just trying to, um, do some planning for August. I, I feel like I'm never really off. I'm never really not doing anything. I mean, I've been in my office every single day this week working, but there's a difference when you don't have the pressure of, uh, performing when you can just be planning and doing and like you're not on. So um, I appreciate everybody so, so very much being here, um, hanging out and just, I mean, it has been, you know, I feel like a broken record and I feel like the last six weeks you guys have heard me say, I am struggling, I am struggling, I am struggling. Um, so I do apologize if it has sounded like a broken record and I appreciate you guys being here. We're going to do a little crafting today and then a few updates for you guys. I will be back in August. Um, I already am planning August stuff. Um, I am feeling good about it. I'm feeling like I have a handle on it. So that feels really amazing. Um, all of the blessed to craft packages have gone out. So one of the things that we will still do next week is our blessed to craft live. So that I will announce it. I'm not sure if it's going to be on the 28th or the 30th. So I ran into several problems with the packaging. I had to repackage everybody's blessed to craft package three times. And, um, because of the weight of the packages, um, I ended up the last time I was like, I'm just going to send these priority. And so it cost me like three times the amount to ship it that it would normally cost. But everybody's catalogs are included in it. And it also means that you guys will get your packages within two to three days after I've shipped it. So I'm thinking everybody should have it by the 28th, but I may do our live like on the 29th or the 30th just to make sure everybody has their packages since I literally like took them to the post office two times in two different packagings and they were like, these are still really heavy. It's going to be like $15 a package to send. So then I would bring them home and repackage them. And then finally I was like, I'm sending them priority. And so they all finally went out. Um, so there's catalogs in them and then everybody's projects. So one of the things we'll do next week is our blessed to craft. And then I want to remind everybody that the designer paper designer series paper sell ends at the end of the month. So if you're wanting to stock up on any of the designer papers, now is the time to do that. And then also the paper, um, my paper party sign up is out. And let me just show you guys some cards. Um, now these are not all, uh, these are my cards that I've done. Um, Pip has her cards that she's done, and we have not picked which cards we're going to use. So I'm going to show you some of the cards that could possibly be in the paper party, and I would love for you to um, join me. This paper party is one of the more... Um, this is a less expensive paper party because there's not as many papers. So it is a great time to join. You can join our paper party for $45. It is an incredible value. You get eight 
projects um, that you get to make. Plus you get four, at least four exclusive projects that we share during the party. And then Pip and I love doing the party. So Pip and I tend to do more during the party. Um, I know when Wendy and I, when we were doing ours, Wendy's pretty specific about if we plan two projects or we plan four projects, like that's all that we do. Like we don't go over that. Um, she's very, very specific about that. Pip, on the other hand, I have found once you get her to the party, she is ready to party. <laughs> and that's always how I feel. So I have found that her and I during the party just work so much better well like we work really well together because we just love creating and hanging out so there are always at least a minimum of four other projects that you get to see during the party that are exclusive and i'm telling you we usually do more so here are some of the cards that i made this one, I feel like I needed to mat it with a red piece behind it. Like once I attached this, I was like, whoops, should have added a little bit of red behind that. And then we have this one. I don't know if you guys can tell on here, but I did a really special glitter treatment. And this whole white piece is glittered. I wonder if you can see that. Like you can't see it up close, but maybe if I pull it away here. Can you see? Oh, it's just not coming up on camera. It's gorgeous. Um, but the whole thing, I did a glitter treatment after I did all the stamping and coloring. Turned out really nice. So there's that one. There is this one that has a little wink. Uh, I gave it a little wink at the end, as we like to call it here on my uh, videos. Um, it's really, really beautiful. I love that. We have this one that was fun to do really simple. I love the um, flagged pieces here. I thought it was so cute. Um, this one, if we did this one, if this was one of the ones we picked, um, it probably wouldn't have the twine because this is really old retired baker's twine, but I had to use it. And then there's this one. I did the silver around it. I love this one. This paper is so gorgeous. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with this and the foiling on it or the silver painting, it's just gorgeous. Then we have this one here, which this paper, I cannot wait to use. We're going to be using it all month next month. Um, it's one of the things I'm focusing on. So there's that one. And then there is this one that is gorgeous as well. So those were my creations for the paper party. She will do hers and then we will pick the cards that we want to use. But I would love for you guys to join the paper party. It is really fun. You get all eight, you get eight brand new papers. So you will get a quarter pack of those papers. You get a card kit. So like with the whimsy and wonder, um, if this is the card that we choose to use, you will get a quarter pack of the whimsy and wonder designer paper. And then you will get these pieces to make this exact card. You get a pre-recorded video um, to put all of that together along with a PDF and then during the two days that we gather we do that on Facebook but if you are not on Facebook it's okay because everything's recorded and I send it out via email and I put it on my website as well and it's very organized so you can see we have really got down like how to get it organized in our Facebook group and make it really easy for you guys to participate and then during the party part of our paper party um we do other projects so we call them paper plays and Pip does a minimum of two and I do a minimum of two and we they're just projects so they are just fun projects that we get to share with you and and then we also do a Zoom um, where you can join in and craft with us. We have a crafting session where you can join the Zoom link and craft with us. You don't have to show your face if you don't want. You can just not join with your camera but still be there to chat with us. But we always love it when people join and, and I had so much fun the last time we did it. It's so fun to meet um, new people. And I personally love being on the Zoom calls and listening to everybody in the UK and their accents. I could just talk to them forever. So I really hope that you will join the really fun paper party that we're going to have. I will put a link here in the Facebook 
um, description when I'm done. You can scroll back on my Facebook page and I've shared the link. And then if you're on YouTube, I will put it in the description box below. So let's get started with this kit. Um, this is the paper pumpkin kit. And um, I wanted to um, play with this kit and... There's a bunch of pieces to it and a car, some card bases. Now, I don't this I don't think this is anything exciting like these particular card bases. They're just, you know, colored card bases. But this is really what I wanted to play with. So, I want to take and cut this up. I think and we're going to do this two different ways. So I want this particular piece right here. It looks like that really beautiful alcohol um, inks that you can do. And so I want to use this. And then I think what I want to do is grab my little, um, this is my cut and emboss mini. And I want some circle dies. So let me just grab my circle dies. I'm also going to grab my stitched rectangle dies. And I am in really desperate need of organizing all of my dies. They're out of control and um, quite honestly, I'm out of room. And so I'm going to have to go in and move some of my retired dies, um, down to my retired spot and not keep them with my regular dies, which is sort of a bummer because, um, I like all the ones that are up there. So I have, let me see. I think, do I need this great? Do I need the second one? I always forget. Do I need this gray one? Um, is this for dyes? This one's for dyes, I think. Okay. So then does it just... Is this? Yes. Okay. So what I want to do is take... Will this fit? No, I'm going to have to cut it again. So let's cut it... I guess... like this and then let's put some dies in here so I just want a couple different sizes let me see what I can get in here so I think probably just these two can I get three okay so I think I can get three in there so let's die cut these and see what we can do. I really don't have any idea what I'm gonna do. Like I don't have necessarily a plan for this card. Um, we're just gonna wing it and see what I can do. I love the colors of this. It reminds me of my grandma. She loved this purple. It, I think she would really like this, um, these colors. So let's pop these out. We'll spend some time here in the beginning just cutting some. And I'm going to do the same one. I'm going to do those same. Um, I wonder if I should try to do the bigger one. Like, will I need a bigger one? No. I'm going to do these three again. I think that it will just get me more. Wait, how did I get three? Oh, maybe this one was just smaller. Okay, so let's do those two and cut these. Okay. So we'll cut these. I think that's enough circles. And then let's cut some of these rectangles. Okay, so we have the circles. Let me put all my circles in here. And then let's go ahead and cut this one. I'll cut it in half. Well, it's not really half, but 
best I can do for half. Okay, and then let's use the, um, this is from the stitched rectangles. The only thing is, well, okay. Well, they're not as long. That's the problem. I don't know, this might not work how I was thinking it would. I don't know, let's just die cut it and then see. I mean, it's fine. We'll just, sometimes you just have to cut things and play around. And I could definitely just use some good crafting time with all that's going on. Okay, so let's see if I can keep those in place and if they'll cut all at the same time. Let me see. I've also got some new embossing folders that I'm excited about and I've run out of room to put embossing <laughs> folders. So today my plan is to do a little bit of cleanup with all my dyes and to do a little bit of creating to share with you guys next week a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut um, as much as we can from this piece and then we'll put, let's do, um, will this fit? Will it fit this way? No, it will not. Okay. Let's do that. That's looking good. Um, where's my other plate? Gail said, I love how you just dive in and experiment. I'm always afraid to cut beautiful paper. Well, I hear you, Gail, because I love beautiful paper. But I think the best things that you find sometimes are when you just dive in. And there's always going to be more beautiful paper to be had. Like, I've learned over the 15 years I've been doing this that I have more beautiful paper than I could use in two lifetimes. So sometimes it's just fun. And, and I'm not always in the mood to do this. I think you have to kind of be in the right headspace to do this. Um, but it can be really fun. Okay, so let's put these. I'm going to put all these dies back. I don't want to lose, randomly lose one. And then let's move this out of the way. And let's see what we can create. So I really love this purple. And I sort of like that. I wonder if I could make a shaker part out of this. So let me, uh, I want some black. Like, I think this is so pretty. So I wonder if I can make a shaker out of this. Should we try a shaker? You guys know how scared I feel about shaker cards. Do I have some pretty purple sequins? I feel like, I feel like I have some specific purple sequins that I got. specifically for something else that might work. I just have to dig through all my sequins. Don't you think this would be really pretty in here? Okay. Well, and then I do have some darker purple. There's that one. 
this one. Maybe some pink. And then some of my favorite, which is this one. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do it. We're going to try to make a shaker card. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, I think I can use this one. I think the only one that I'm sort of nervous about is this piece right here. I wish the circle was a little closer because that's really thin. But I'm wondering if... I feel like it looks pretty this way. Okay, so the other thing I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get my small trimmer and I'm gonna clean up this edge because I feel like it's not folded the best. So these little tiny trimmers work great for just cleaning up that edge. So I feel like that's better. So I wonder if I do this piece here like that. And then what if I do, well, let's make the shaker part first. So we need some acetate of some kind. So let me also, well, look, let's use, I mean, let's just use all, only the stuff in the paper pumpkin kit. So right here, let's just use this. So do I want something thicker? No, I'll go ahead and use this. So the first thing we're going to do is put our plastic over this piece. I got to try to remember exactly how to make a shaker card. <laughs> I mean, it's been a really long time. So we're gonna put liquid glue on here. This is the only part I'm kind of nervous about that's really thin. But I don't know, we, we can just make it work. So I think this is big enough. Sure is. Okay, so I'm just gonna press this down. Let it attach. Okay, and then we'll just take our scissors and trim this. Like so. And get this piece. It's an odd piece. I should have been thinking about this while I was cutting. But that's okay. So the part that I'm wondering about is this is kind of just an odd shape to put on here. Like it's just maybe gonna be like this. And then what I'm wondering is like what should we do for a sentiment or should I center it? Okay, let's use a piece of this just because it's so pretty, but I don't want a ton of it. So now is the shaker pieces that's too big. That's not going to work. So I wonder if the shaker pieces are going to be pretty on black. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is going to look odd, but I'm just going to go for it. So now we need to put all the foam on here. So let's use... I'm going to use both of these foams. Now, these are foams that I've been trying out. I really like these. Um... They are a cheaper version of the 3M tape, is what they are. And I get them on Amazon. 
and I can link them if anybody is interested. Um, wonder if I should just use this size and call it good. I was gonna use both, but. See, this part is gonna be hard. Okay, so we're going to, I'm fairly nervous about this part. I don't know what I'm gonna do there. So for your shaker part, you really just want to put I should do the circles first. Okay, cuz So I'm going to take the paper off of both sides so that this will um so I can manipulate it better. This is probably gonna be a long video because I was not planning on doing a shaker. Maybe we'll only do the shaker. So then you're just gonna... And I think I can just trim any of the extra that kind of hangs off. I think that's how I'll do this is I'll just go ahead and do the because I don't want the adhesive to show inside the circle like I can trim it on the outside but I can't really trim it inside the circle so I know my hand I, my hands might be in the way but you'll hopefully get the idea of what I'm doing okay when you take off the backing, it really makes a difference because it allows you to manipulate it a little bit better. Okay, so then you just pinch it and fold it so that when you're cutting it, oops, oopsie, oh good. It goes right in there, okay? So then we'll do it the same thing with the rest of these. So if I was doing a regular video, I would cut all of this out so you didn't have to see this part. And it takes a minute, but once you see, like I've sort of got the hang of it. So it's working a little bit easier. And then right there, I'm hoping But in between, these two are going to be okay. Okay, so let's... This is pretty aggressive adhesive. I, I do like this foam. Okay, and then... Maybe... Maybe we just piece it around this second, or this last circle. Okay, let's get another piece. Everybody hanging in there with me? Okay. I don't know. This is pretty... This might be pretty difficult. Okay. So now this is the part I'm nervous about. So we're just gonna twist it. Well, I mean, we don't know until we try, right? Me, nope, I can't pull that up. Okay. I should have done the circles first. I'm just out of practice with them with shakers okay I don't think that the sequence will fall out of there and then let's just put a tiny piece here this last circle 
I don't know, the sequence might look a little, kind of a little funny in this one, but we'll make it work. So I'm gonna kind of manipulate this piece down into here. Okay, now let's fill in all these other places and we're just gonna try to make this work. And then we'll put our sequence in, well, we'll trim it first, but we need, we need foam here. I mean, really your main objective is to keep all the sequins where you want them. So as long as we're doing that, this is so sticky. <laughs> uh, I don't know, this could be a disaster again. But if it is, it'll be fine. Let's put a piece there. And then a piece here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around on the outside here and try to cut that off. Now it's sticky, so it's not, it's gonna be hard unless you have like non-stick scissors. I know that Tim Holtz sells a pair of scissors that are like non-stick. That probably would be easier if you have those. So right here is gonna be, yeah, see, I don't know. I don't know that this is gonna work. Shoot, how can I do that? Let's think about it. Okay, I have an idea. So the hard part is when it's sticky. So let's not make that part right there sticky. Let's stick this down here. I don't want inside the circle to show. Like that's my main objective. So I can always cut. Yeah. Okay, so let's see now if I can cut this. Yeah, better. Okay, that fixed it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take a powder tool. And I just want some powder on the acetate and then on the edges of the circle so that... Now this circle is going to be, I don't know how well that's going to go. Okay, so let's take this out. So the other thing is sometimes I make like, okay, I didn't have a plan for this, for this uh, shaker. I would make this and then what I would do is I would then make it again. So, okay, it's gonna go here. See, some of the, that's what I was afraid of. I would make it again knowing. So maybe, maybe I'll do that off camera and then share, like I take what I learn from it. So now we have to put the sequence in here, but we also have to, I want it on the black, so how can I do this? This is the part that I hate about shakers because I'm so picky. See, if I do it upside down, I can't tell if it's lined up. So how do I do this? Normally what I would do is I would put a backing on the whole shaker piece and then I would attach it to my card. But I don't want to do that. So let's see if I can just, I don't know, we've winged everything else. Let's just see if we can do this part too. Okay, so this, I really wanna use this. This is um, Pretty in Pink from Little Things from Lucy's Cards. I think I got the, these on simonsays.com. simonsaysstamps.com. And 
Andrew's gonna freak out that I made a shaker card. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do <laughs> this is a nightmare. This is why I don't do shaker cards. But what I was saying is if you do one, just think about the things that like you'll, you could do different and then do the next and then do another card. Okay. So we're getting there. Line that up. I think I need more in this circle here. And then I have no idea what we're gonna do for a sentiment. One problem at a time. <laughs> okay, put that there. I've never done a shaker card like this before. Touchdown. Touchdown. <laughs> Gail, this is not, this is like not the best way to make the shaker card. This is not, I did not do it the easiest way. And the thing that was the, the hardest part that I would, I would totally do different is this was too thin, this space right here. So then what you can do, like there's a little bit of foam showing right there. So I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna push it in underneath and then press it down. So there's your shaker pieces. So again, if I was doing this card again, what I would do so now that I've, you know, thought about it, what I would do is I would cut this down at four inches and then by like five and a quarter. So I need to take a slight bit off. Now let me grab another card base. Here's a black card base. So I need a tiny bit more. Okay, let's just do another one. Let's do it. Okay, so let's take our, I'm gonna take us, I'm only gonna do one circle, okay? So let me go cut this on my big, big, on my bigger machine. So we're just gonna cut that and I'm gonna do it right in the middle. Okay, so we'll cut that. Now I actually have a good idea. Okay, so see that just sparked an idea. And I actually, I'm gonna take that one apart and I'm gonna use those sequins because they're so beautiful. Okay, so this is what you wanna do. Uh, it's probably gonna be a nightmare to take that apart, but that's okay. So we need acetate. So let me get some. Let me get some. Let's see. Where is a clear stamp? A photopolymer stamp. Okay. So I'm just going to take, this is just one of my new stamp sets. I'm just going to take the packaging off here. So I just, t I tend to keep this stuff. So we'll do this again because now I really want a shaker card with this paper. Okay, then we have, so just put some around there. Okay, so that's the first step, is you need the acetate. And it takes it a minute to, to attach. 
Oh yeah, my nails match. <laughs> Susan said, I love shakers. This one is tricky, but doable. It's great that you made it and gave us the tips. I don't, it's like, I don't want to tear this apart, but I also want to use the sequence and this is pretty sequence. I don't know. We'll I'll decide. Okay. So once you get your glue on there to hold that, and this acetate is a little bit messed up. You can buy brand new acetate. Like, so it's not that one. Probably wasn't the prettiest piece of acetate. Oops. And you don't need it to go all the way across your card. <coughs> oh, sorry guys. Okay. So now what we're going to do is take our foam tape and we're going to take the backing off okay and this is going to make it to where we can twist it around the circle and you can double foam so you can stack two layers of foam if you want to give it more room to shake so then just keep twisting and it doesn't have to be right on the edge of the circle. It's totally fine. You're just making a place for all the sequins to be. Okay. And I'm not very graceful with this. So I don't do the most graceful putting these together. I'm not like you just see that I struggle. Like there's pieces of this I struggle with. Okay. So then I'm going to put it here. Okay. And then here. And then, like, see, I get frustrated at, like, the adhesive is really sticky and all that. Okay, so now, um, I still don't think I can use the, is this too big? No, I think it's okay. And uh, if you guys have followed me for very long, you know I don't like tedious projects. And with shaker cards, you just have to have patience. Like, it's totally fine. You just have to... This foam is really sticky, you guys. It's probably not the easiest to cut like that. I always feel like I have to make about four shaker cards before I get the one that I really want. Because I, le I keep learning. Like, I keep going, oh, like, I shouldn't have done this. Like, I probably shouldn't have put the, um, acetate all the way. I should have just put it by the circle. No, it'll melt it, Julie. Thank you, Missy. It will melt the acetate if you heat, if you heat it. Unless you get heat resistant acetate, which you can get, but this particular, this is just packaging. So it will not, it'll melt. It'll be a bad situation, pretty much. Once we get the sequence in there, it's not going to matter. Okay. Now, now this piece is going to go right, I want it right in the middle. So the next thing we're going to do is use our powder tool. So this is a really good tip. You're going to put that on the acetate and then all around the circle where it's sticky. 
Okay, now we're gonna try to do the same thing where we just put all the sequins in the middle and then we put the whole thing over it. So now the question is, do I tear this apart and use the sequins or do I try to make it work? So I have some of these sequins. You guys tell me in the comments, should I pull that one apart or try to keep that one and make it work? So let's add a little bit of pink. And then let's add a little bit of my favorite. You're kind of making me want to try and make a shaker card. Gail, you should totally try it. Just when you go in to make it, just know that like you might, like you need to have some patience. Like that's what I always have to remind myself when I'm doing it. Julie said, pull it apart. Missy said, keep it. Deborah said, make it work. Okay, so let's just make it work and then I'll just add these sequins that I have. I have enough that I, of sequins. I just, I really loved that Lucy's. And I thought I had more of it somewhere, but I think I used it on something else. So there's a little bit of that. And then let's add a few dark purple in here. So usually if you're filling this, um, so there's two ways to fill your shaker card. You can do it the way I'm doing it, where you're just stacking it right in there and we're gonna try to do it. And that's because I'm not putting a backing on this. The other way you can do it is you can fill your circle and then put a backing piece on this part and then attach it to your card, which I think is a little bit easier to do it that way. Um, but I really want this against the black. Like I really want this purple um, to pop against this black. So that's why I'm doing it this way, which I think is a little bit harder. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is peel off all of the foam backing and then I'm gonna put this right on here. So in order for me to do this, I have to get right over it. So I'm gonna pull the card closer to me so that I can attach it, but then I'll show you right away. So I'm just pulling off all of the backing of the foam. So now it's super sticky. And then I'm gonna put this right directly over and center it. Okay, okay, so we're gonna press this down. Okay, so press the foam down. I think some of my sequins got up under the foam, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we have that black border and then we have all the sequins in here. So now we're gonna work on a sentiment. So I have this die. This is from the holiday, the fall winter catalog. This is actually one of the dies that we're using in our paper party. And it looks like this. It says happy. So what we're going to do is cut. Um, I wonder if I should just use this purple. I was gonna use black, but maybe let's use the purple. Put this in here. We're gonna cut this a couple times. It just depends on, um, the way you put the sequins in just depends on how you're doing the card. I personally like the other way where you put a backing, uh, like you fill the whatever shape you have, you fill that and then you put a backing and then you attach the whole thing to the card. I feel like that's um, easier, uh, but because of the way this one, I did this one, um, filling it and then putting the card over it, I felt like was easier. Okay, so let's cut two of these. And then let me find the stamp set that goes with this. I don't even know what kind of sentiments are in this kit. Okay. Um, so a 
it says sending hugs, congratulations, many thanks, and then for everything. Happy for everything, that's not gonna work. Happy congratulations, happy sending hugs. Um, okay, so I'll probably have to grab another stamp set. Okay, so we have this. And then we have our two happies and we're going to put these together so that they are uh, uh, like stacked. So we're just gonna put a couple dots here and there. When you're putting together these kinds of dies, you don't need to cover all of the dies, like the whole thing with glue. You just need a couple dots here and there and then we'll take our happy and I need a piece of scrap paper I'm gonna uh, pounce it off so that the glue doesn't seep everywhere and then you can press this together. Then you don't have glue seeping out of all of the edges. So now that's a little bit thicker. Look how cute that is. I love it. And then I think that that's going to be okay, but I want another sentiment like maybe this could be a birthday cake or a birthday cake a birthday card so good grief let me grab just all of my sentiments so birthdays okay so here is my all the sentiments remember when i did this and i pulled apart all of the um sentiments that i had that were birthday or whatever it was so let's just use a birthday, like this one, I think I'll just use the birthday part. Okay. So what we're gonna do is grab a block. And then which ones, so Evergreen and Bumblebee ink spots came in this. And I think that's really weird because these do not match this. So let's use um, Highland Heather. Okay. Then we're going to take a little bit of white cardstock. Um, I did this the other day. I was prepping kits and I had all these random white things like basic white cardstock. I put it in a bag and I kept it by my space and that's actually working out really well. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah, you guys can see. So let's just stamp. Oh, that's pretty straight. I really wasn't worried if it was straight or not, but that came out straight. And then let's just cut this out. So I'm just really very basically cutting this out. I'm not terribly worried if it's perfectly straight. This is handmade. It's not Hallmark. It doesn't need to be perfect. It really does not matter. I promise you. Right? We can like do our best to do really nice cards, but we also don't need to freak out and have everything exactly perfect. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add this. Again, we're just gonna do a couple dots here and there. Okay, then we're gonna take this, just pounce off some of the adhesive, make sure our card is opening up properly, 
and then we're going to put this right in the middle. So it almost looks like it's, I'm just going to put some, I need a couple blocks. Okay, and then for our birthday part, what we're going to do is, I think I have like some thin pieces of that foam. Do I have like a little tiny piece? I'll have to cut it, but I'm going to cut a little piece of foam. Oh, I did. I did have a tiny piece that I wouldn't have had to cut, but that's okay. So I'm going to put this foam on here. Hey, Megan. Okay. Now we have this piece. And you guys, I think we did it. I think we made a shaker card. Okay, and then we're gonna put the birthday right there. And look at that. So pretty, right? So now we have this one. And I really like, I don't even know what to do with this one, you guys. I mean, I'm a little sad that I wasted my sequence on this because I'm not positive what to do. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. I sort of have an idea. Look at that, it just came to me. Where's my other, do I have another one of those card bases? What do I have, what do I have? Do you only get two of these? I thought you got three of them. I mean, I have stuff everywhere, so. Do you only get two of those? Well, I got three yellow ones, so why didn't I get three pretty purple ones? Hmm. Okay, well, that's kind of a bummer. I really wanted, I really wanted another one of these. That's okay, we'll use this. So let's use, this as a black card base. I should see my desk. It's, I, I can't even, I can't even with this mess. Okay, so we're gonna four and a quarter. And by the way, my blade desperately needs to be changed. So we're gonna have to do my old tried and true nail file trick. Just clean up those edges. Okay, then we're gonna take this one and we're gonna cut it at four inches by five and a quarter. Oh, I think I did have three of them. I think I cut them up, right? Okay, and then, is this the right size? Four and a quarter. No, it is not. Okay, that's okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're just winging it today. We're just having some fun because we can. Okay, so we have our card base, which is a tiny bit hard to see because I have a black mat. Okay, better right. Now we have this piece. Then we're gonna have our shaker piece, which is not 
cut the best. There's these pieces here. I mean, again, I don't know that I would use the shaker piece. It's like I would use it as a as a way for me to learn what not to do or how to do something better. So sometimes I think that we forget that everything that we make does not always have to be perfect the first time we make it. If we're trying a new technique for the first time, if we're not sure how something's going to work, it might we might not be able to salvage it. it. It doesn't, you don't have to make everything work. Sometimes it's a learning process. And then you just take that as a moment where you've learned how to do something. And then you can do the next time you do it, you have the skills to make it better, to make it look the way you want it to look. So we'll put this up in the corner. Hold that down for one minute. And then let's take the stamp set wherever I put it. Huh. Here it is. And let's do the thanks. And we'll just do that same thing that we did. We'll take... this. We'll take our Highland Heather ink, a block, thanks. Look what I just did. Whole hand in the ink pad. And then we'll trim this. Where's my snips? So this I cut crooked, but again, I mean, I, I didn't cut it crooked. I stamped it crooked, but it's totally fine. I'm just gonna cut it out straight. So I'm just cutting it really close. Okay, and then we'll put it right there. Oh my gosh, a piece of foam touched me and I like just about freaked out. I thought it was like a spider or something. I almost yelled, but I was like, oh my word, you're on camera, don't freak out. It's fine, if it's a spider, it'll be fine. It was just a piece of paper. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to cut this foam again. I'll tell you, the worst part of this is cutting the adhesive, like cutting this foam and stuff. Actually, the, all the other parts of the shaker are probably not all that bad. It's this. Cutting this foam and placing it everywhere and then having to cut it again and getting the backing off of it. That's the stuff that I lose my patience over. Okay, so this video took a turn. I never intended to do shaker cards. Yeah, I kind of, this is not, I mean, it's definitely not my favorite. I think it was a really good idea, but I don't, I don't think I did it well, right? So I learned a few things. 
I do like how this, like, it kind of curls up around this piece. I think that if I had been thinking that I would do a shaker with this, I would have made it a specific size and then done the circles a little bit better to where the shaker would have been easier um, to do. This one is definitely, if you're going to make a shaker and you've never made one, then I would totally suggest doing something really simple, a circle, a square, just one thing. And then you can figure out, um, you know, what your personal struggles are. Like maybe you won't struggle with the adhesive and it's sticking to you and getting and feeling annoyed by that. Like maybe that's not the thing that will annoy you. Maybe the thing that annoys you is putting the sequence in and um, the amount that you put in or something. And so you have to figure out like what my struggles are, are not necessarily going to be what your struggles are. And what the pieces that you like doing may not be the pieces that I like doing. So when you go in to make your first one, totally, totally have grace with yourself and then just figure out what works. And then know that maybe you'll probably have to make a couple before they turn out exactly perfect. Or exactly how you want them to. So I do have all of these left, all of these original pieces that I cut that I was going to do something with. I will probably do something with them and then just share a picture with you guys um, of what I make uh, since these took so long. I hope you enjoyed seeing these. I guess these are like tips and tricks for making your very first shaker card for diving in and just trying to make a shaker card. One of the things that I don't love about shaker cards is on the side when you see all of the foam. Um, this is a little bit better because I was able to be a little bit more precise about where I was putting the foam. I think it's really nice if you do a double layer of foam so that you can um, your sequence move around easier in your shaker card. So I think that that can be um, a little bit um, easier. Uh, my favorite sequence to use in, well, on anything you guys, you know, is the Doris sequence. I get them at, um, you can get them on Amazon, but they are cheaper at um, simonsaysstamps.com. You can get a pack for like 99 cents. So I always, whenever I, I order from Simon Says um, Stamps like twice a year, and whenever I do, I just pick up a whole bunch of these sequins, and then I have them on hand, and I have them in... Um, one of Stampin' Up's old, um, old tens. We had these tens last year. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these shaker cards. I'll pop a photo up on um, my Facebook page here, and I will probably write a blog post with all the details. If you're on YouTube, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, this will go up today. You can see all of the links in the YouTube description box below. And I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. I will be back next week with our Blessed to Craft Live, and then we will dive in to August feeling a little bit better about all the things that are going on. So thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day.